Let us now consider a different example. Suppose a mother wants to divide a cake among two uh, kids, uh, kid one and kid two, and the goal of uh, division of uh, dividing this cake is uh, such that each of these kids uh, is happy with his or her portion. So it should not happen that after the division is done, one of the kids may complain uh, to the mother that uh, he, uh, he or she got a smaller piece. So with that uh, objective in mind, we can make it a little more formal. What is the meaning of uh, this uh, so-called fair division of this cake? So it should mean that uh, kid one should uh, think that uh, he got at least half of this cake and kid two should also think that she got also at least half of this cake. And this uh, half, this definitions of half is actually subjective. So in their own view, it should be, uh, it should be half. So mother is a third party in this case, uh, may not know what is their view because uh, the mother, even though uh, she knows that kids well, she might not be exactly knowing that uh, how much a particular uh, kid uh, values the, the icing on the cake or the cherry on, on top of the cake, etc. So um, uh, she could have cut the cake uh, herself and uh, given each of these pieces, each of these kids. But then the trouble may happen is one of these kids may complain that the other kid got a larger piece. How to mitigate that uh, problem? So uh, more succinctly, the challenge is uh, the mother wants to achieve a fair division of this cake, but it, uh, she does not have enough information to do it. She, uh, she actually does not know what is a fair division. So the question therefore is to uh, is the following. Can she design a mechanism? A protocol of uh, this cake cutting among these two kids with that incomplete information uh, to achieve a fair division. And uh, this problem essentially occurs in various other kind of contexts, uh, division of any kind of uh, resources. And it turns out that uh, this, uh, this is an age-old problem and therefore it also has an age-old solution. And what is that solution? Let us call this, uh, this solution I cut you choose mechanism. What is it? So the mother says that uh, kid one, you can cut this cake and uh, then kid two will choose uh, her favorite piece. So that mechanism is that simple. So let us see what happens, uh, what are the implications of this mechanism. So can, can it uh, really achieve a uh, fair division? The answer is yes. So what will happen in this context, if you think carefully, kid one will divide this exactly equal in his view and the reason for that is because if he does not do that uh, he always uh, has a uh, has a risk of losing the larger piece so therefore uh, after the uh, the cake cutting a uh, kid one will be indifferent between these two pieces so he is happy he is happy with any of these pieces kid two will also be happy because she picks the the piece which is larger in her view uh, and these two views could be different. So uh, for kid one, the divisions are equal, but for kid two, whichever uh, she thinks is the larger, she will get that piece. And therefore both these kids will be happier and uh, mother will be actually implementing this, uh, this fair division without even knowing what their favorite choices were. And that is exactly what we, we are going to discuss in mechanism design. It is the inverse of uh, game theory. It starts with an objective. In this context, the objective was to do a fair division. Then we are going to design a game such that those reasonable outcome, those fair division is actually uh, implemented here. And that is the prescriptive approach. If we do it in this way, there won't be any conflict among these two players. And of course, I mean, there are extensions of the, the same idea for multiple players, uh, not necessarily only two players. So, uh, a very natural question is uh, why should we design a game? Uh, does it so this example of this fair division, uh, even though we can see that it applies to other places, these are uh, quite limited. But uh, let us give uh, uh, give one more example about where uh, game design uh, or the mechanism design is uh, is very important. So this comes from the examples of sports tournaments. Uh, so typically they always have groups. Majority of the uh, the tournaments, let's say uh, football tournament, have a round robin in every group. So uh, the, the 
the teams are partitioned into smaller groups and first they play round robin in every group and then the top two will qualify. Now the question is, is this a good tournament design? And to answer that, uh, let us go, go back to one historical event. In fact, there are many such events that happened uh, in, the, in the past. Uh, so this uh, example comes from the World Cup uh, football or soccer of 1982. So this happened in the group two. There were four teams, Austria, Algeria, West Germany and Chile. Now Australia, Austria was uh, at that point uh, quite a strong team and it was quite certain that they are going to qualify to this next level, next round. Uh, it was uh, and also Chile was not uh, the, the, the most strongest team. So the competition to qualify for the next round was essentially between Algeria and West Germany. Even though West Germany was a little stronger team, in the first game uh, some shock happened. So it is essentially Algeria has uh, defeated West Germany. Uh, then what happened in the, in the other games is that Austria beat Algeria, Algeria beat Chile. So the situation happened in uh, such that that uh, Algeria is almost going to uh, qualify because the, the final game was between uh, Austria, mighty Austria and West Germany and there was little chance for West Germany to win that game. Uh, so what happened was that uh, uh, West Germany needed to win this game in order to uh, qualify. Uh, Austria has already qualified so nothing uh, hurts them. Uh, what happened in this case, uh, in this uh, uh, game, uh, which this game is also known as Disgrace of Gijon. So this is a, a city in, in Spain where the game happened. If you are interested, you can Google up uh, for, uh, for this game. Uh, the, the teams of West Germany and Austria made a contract. Uh, so they, uh, uh, the, the game was very exciting in the, uh, in the initial part of this game. Uh, so and West Germany first scored a goal. And after that, both these teams stopped playing. Uh, and essentially Austria lost which made West Germany to qualify and Algeria was eliminated. Now um, this, this uh, if, you, if you think about it, this is not unusual uh, uh, and uh, you, you, more recently you have seen other examples. Uh, the 2012 London Olympics uh, women's doubles uh, was another example where this kind of a thing happened. But this, uh, this could not be blamed to the players. They essentially played according to the law. Uh, the, it is more problematic uh, for the, the design of this tournament or the law of the game itself. So therefore, I think it's a, it's a better, uh, so this uh, round robin, even though there had been many changes uh, at, the, uh, at this uh, football World Cup level, at this time, uh, the last two matches do not happen one after another. They happen simultaneously and to different places so that uh, information can flow very uh, slowly. Uh, but still that com does not completely uh, take away this problem. So there could be a better mechanism uh, which will uh, make such kind of a manipulative uh, actions by these players and not beneficial for them. So in this course we are going to discuss uh, two major topics and their applications. So the, the first part will be the non-cooperative game theory. So there is another area of game theory which is cooperative game theory and we are not going to discuss that in this course. Uh, the other part will be the mechanism design part and we'll go it in that order first the game theory and then mechanism design and whenever required we'll give sufficient examples to relate it with the, with the real world. As a, as a viewer and listener to this course uh, there are uh, takeaways from this course uh, so you can apply the principles of economic theory and computation to understand incentives in social systems and that happens on the internet. You can also build a test for the mathematical description of social problems, uh, problems where conflicting interests are at play. And then finally you can uh, essentially uh, design uh, artificially intelligent systems that does this kind of decision making automatically. So for instance the, the kick cutting protocol can be deployed into a uh, more sophisticated AI system such that it can make predictions based on the user's preferences.